people though. Ashlyness here with Maya Byrne. We um, she just finished playing a cozy cabin concert. Oh my out, god! And it's so beautiful here. We're Can in you see these beautiful trees? Look at the trees. That's so why I'm nice. wearing. Oh, I just realized I'm wearing hats. I match the tree. Um, it's like camouflage, except for my <laughs> hair. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi. It's so good to see you. You too. It's been a while. I know. It's been. We haven't played together in a while. It has been ages. When was it? It must have been. Um... Uh, it must have been one of Sam's shows. Oh yeah. my gosh! Uh, we're talking about Sam Teichman of Leave yes. the Lasting Mark. Leave the Lasting Mark show. Leave the Lasting Mark. Here, here. There's the logo. There you go. That Mark. is so cool. Yes. So Ashley is interviewing me. Yeah. So we're just going to talk a little bit about music, and I guess that's all. Um, yeah, we're at the Cozy Cabin concerts in Greenbrook, New Jersey. Yeah. Correct. Right off of and... Route 78. Yeah. Very close to New York City, and I grew up just down the road to Spell, like about 10 miles from here. So it's my last show before officially moving to the West Coast, which I'm really... I'm, I'm going to miss you. Well, you're going to see me. Yeah. You'll see me. So one thing that I wanted to do with my channel is start talking about um, music education, and I'm a singer-songwriter, so I'd like to talk to other writers about their process in writing, and how we got into music. So I guess let's start with writing. When did you start writing? Well, I started writing probably when I was just a, a child, you know? I, mm -hmm. I, I just, I was, I started, I wrote my first song when I was maybe in the second grade and it was about a camera I got for, <laughs> for Hanukkah for my grandparents and it was just like, you know, Lucy had a camera, 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 Lucy <laughs> had a camera, da, da, da. It was like, and then I, I would write songs when, when I became a latchkey kid, I would, I would write, my mom went back to school, and I would write songs in my head, because I hated walking, I was always walking home from school, you know, a half mile, is, it wasn't bad, right. you know, and it's, um, but, so I would, I would make up songs to pass the time uh, on the way home from school and then when I was a teenager, you know, I was a very sullen, sullen teenager and when I was a teenager, um, I didn't write at all until I was about 17 and then I remember being 17 and just like one day all of these songs came out and it was amazing and I just realized, because I'd been playing guitar but I'd never put it, put it all together like that and that's kind of when I started concentrating on that and actually my first one of my first complete songs was actually a political song about a little five and ten cent store in, in my hometown that got shut down by by raising rents and, and greedy people and and whatnot and you know it was like it was just a very interesting and, and strange thing to to have as my first focus and now being a, a highly political uh, folk and rock singer mm -hmm it's 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 kind of come full circle but so then I went to college and I didn't take songwriting courses in college I, I was writing a bit I was hanging out with a bunch of rock and rollers up in Boston uh, the great Peter Wolf who's the lead singer of the Jay Giles band I learned a lot about songwriting from him then I came back to New York and I hooked up with Jack, the late Jack Hardy, who was basically my mentor. He's a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful guy. Um, and I write a, basically the, the whole shtick is you write a song every single Monday and whether it's good or bad, you just do it just mm -hmm. to get it out and to keep the muscles strong. And most, most Mondays I actually do do yeah. this. And I'm glad you still do. I found it so difficult to do a song a week and uh... It's, it takes some time and sometimes you get burnt out on it. Like I, uh, like right now I feel like I'm sort of in a uh, this state where I'm not quite writing as structured as I, you know, I, I, I am writing and things are coming out but I'm not really writing with any intention just because I just came off of a huge creative period and I just finished, you know, as you know, I just 
finished my new record. I've been mm -hmm. doing a whole lot of stuff and I'm moving and, um, but people also, here's the other thing is it, people sometimes discount the fact that revision is such a part of the songwriting process. So one of the things that I did today at this show is I played a lot of my newer songs that I had written uh, about a month ago, I made myself a songbook. Like I made myself, a, like I just sat down with all of my song lyrics and I went through like uh, two years worth of stuff and I was like, oh, I like this song. Oh, I forgot about this song. Oh, this song needs a little work. And and I, I, I put about 20 songs in the songbook and I'm just trying to incorporate some of them and write more. And, um, and uh, that's the whole thing too. It's like, in our Monday night process, it's that you you need to bring a new song, or you should have something that you've been working on that you know maybe needs some more work or you know a revision or whatever. But it's hard to just output all the time and not fill the well. You got to right. fill the well. You got to you got to go on walks. You got to go to a museum and, and do all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any advice for revisions? Because I think that's for me is the hardest. In what way um, is it hard for you? I don't know. Just like kind of maybe letting go of what I have and trying to ex like expand on the good things and just let go of the what's not working I think I think that's but I think you've hit the nail on the head I mean that's exactly <laughs> it you have to let go um, Jack used to say you have to subjugate the ego enough to let the basically you have to let the song speak for itself what does the song want that's always a question it's always a question I'm I'm asking my co-writers when mm -hmm. I write with them. I'll be like, well, I'll just sit there because when I write for myself or by myself, I'm sort of doing this process. Um, bye, guys. Our friends are leaving. Revisions. It <laughs> it is one of the hardest things to do. It's it's hard to put that away because so many people are tied into their first thought, and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that because as Kerouac said, first thought, best thought. And oftentimes, what you're looking for is a lot simpler than what you than what you think you might want. Mm -hmm. So for me, revision is often taking out extra words, seeing mm -hmm. how I can revise it, and then trying to find whatever the the meat of the story is, and, mm -hmm. and follow where the song wants to go. And but for me too, a lot of my revision process is literally walking. Like I will. Mm -hmm. I know a song is good if it sticks in my head, and if I can yeah. start to remember it when it's mm -hmm. in my head, that doesn't always happen. That's why I make the songbook. Um, but what I'll do is, and this is a pick, trick I picked up from Jack Hardy, which is yeah. literally walking down the street and writing songs to the beat of your feet, which also rhymes. But uh, or being in your car and doing a similar thing. Mm -hmm. um, singing the melody, getting the melody in your head, and finding that focus. But that's, that's the, I think the most, the, for me, the most important part of revising is just going through these songs in my head. And that's the only way I know how to do it. Other people do it much differently. Um, I have a friend uh, named Diana Jones, and she advises a friend of mine named Meg Braun, and Meg Braun picked up a, a thing from Diana, which was, you want to <laughs> practice your songs, each song, three times in a row. I like that. Yeah. So like a practice session, instead of going through your whole set, would be mm -hmm. practice this song, practice three songs, three times in a row. And that's your daily practice of your repertoire. And like, as I perform these songs, I also find these little things that I sort of tap mm -hmm. away and chunk away. Yeah. But mostly it's like, get rid of ands and justs and theys and thes and mm -hmm. how can like filler, kind of filler things. things um jack used to to really obsess over not using similes um yeah, using yeah. metaphors instead of similes which is a more which can be a more powerful poetic mm -hmm. concept sometimes you need to, to a simile yeah. but it's important to know it's important to know the difference and and what needs to actually happen you know in that song that's my advice on Thank you. Now, so was Jack your introduction to the folk, the folk world, or how did you get involved in that specific genre of music? Jack probably really was my introduction to folk in terms of being a, a solo acoustic performer. 
I had I had taught myself a, how to finger pick and whatever, but I was mm -hmm. and when I play live, it's sort of the, the sort of Neil Young dichotomy. Like I play, I can play very acoustic and mm -hmm. I can play electric and whatever. But um, from Jack, I learned a lot of uh, classic folk traditions, the Bardic traditions, and. Um, there are some books that he told me to read that I haven't read yet that I have to call the, there's a book called The White Goddess that I still need to read mm -hmm. and uh, and just how to pluck songs out of the air but what's interesting is that I played with Jack for a long time and then I went more into the rock and roll scene mm -hmm. and then ap and I'd always had friends in the folk scene continually and then after I had I had lost my voice and my band had to stop playing and after i recovered from my vocal surgery i i was cajoled, could basically cajoled <laughs> by a friend of mine um who was in the songwriting scene to who, who's the president of nerfa the northeast regional folk alliance and she's like you have to come to this folk festival you have to meet your people these are your people <laughs> and she was right uh, Cheryl Prashker of the band Runa. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. And so, and that all happened at, after Jack died, but it is definitely through through my association with him that I met uh, a lot of the people that I play with and uh, became more embedded in the folk scene. Do you have any advice for people who are just starting out in music or, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much. My advice for anyone starting out in music is get good, find yourself, be, and don't be afraid to make mistakes and play as much as you possibly can. And if you know that this is what you want to do, it doesn't matter. You don't need to go to college. You can learn all you want. You can go to, like, you, you can do whatever you want. If you're good at being a musician, a, don't get yourself into debt. Now, college is wonderful, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I'm glad and I feel very privileged that I got to go to school. And, and, but I also went to like a school in New York City and I got a lot of subsidies, so I, I wound up not being in debt. And mm -hmm. it enabled me the freedom to be able to do a lot of touring and to, to live the life, to develop the life I have now. I, I've, I've talked to a bunch of teenagers uh, about this and I've said to them, I'm, I'm, they'll be on a successful track and they're like, well, should I go to Berkeley? I went to Berkeley College of Music for a couple of years. Um, and I'm like, no, just don't, don't. Just, just keep writing and keep learning. I had a teacher, after I graduated from college, um, I wanted to go to, masters, to a master's program in writing. And my mentor at college, a, a poet named Sharon Mesmer, basically said to me, Oh, yeah. If, because I was really upset because I didn't get into like some oh, fancy pants program right. that would have put me like, uh, really like a zillion yeah. dollars in that. <laughs> and uh, she's like, listen, if you want to be a writer, just write. Mm -hmm. There are people who can help, help find you find your voice. And the point is too is that in finding your voice. It's important to listen and feel that well. It's important to listen not just to your peers. Um, it's important to, to uh, the, you know, the analog is Picasso, probably the guy who pushed the envelope most in art in the 20th century, in physical art, still went and copied the works of the masters in museums. And that's part of what you gotta do is don't be afraid to say put your own lyrics to a Stevie Wonder song um, just to do it to find those rhythms within the songs and incorporate them into your own vocabulary of, of, of music um, and then also be real about it I have I do um, work that is not music related and I do a lot of things within music um, that make me money and that enable me to be able to live and to eat and um, Just do it <laughs> by any means necessary. Not to quote freaking Nike, but, but just yeah. You have to if you want to make it in music. It's not about being the next big thing or following trends mm -hmm. or whatever. Because I'm certainly as outside the box as they come. <laughs> but what people are really into more than anything mm -hmm. in the world, the real people, the people who care about you and want you to succeed and will feed you and let you sit at their table or invite you into their homes or come to your shows 
or give you advice or buy you a tank of gas. Those are people, those are the people who want honesty. And honesty is the most important part of songwriting. And um, as, as my friend Jack Hardy would say, you know, never let the truth get in the way of a good song. <laughs> poetic justice and poetic license is a very important thing. But being honest means being yourself. And being yourself is the most important part of, of succeeding in any art that you, that you, form, that, that you choose to, to practice. I've actually heard that a lot. I was thinking about um, going back to grad school either for video or media work and I think maybe two people had encouraged me to go to school and everyone else said just do it. So that's why we're here with my selfie stick Excellent. And, you know just chatting with people who I admire oh, and, sweetie. <laughs> and, and uh, appreciate their work and um, I wanted to talk a little more. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, it's my for pleasure. My absolute sitting pleasure. Sitting here with me and doing okay. this little video. And um, do you want to sing a song together? Sure. Um, awesome. Cool. A little experiment here. <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right. Let's see how it goes. One, two, three. Sitting in the morning sun. I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Watching the ships roll in, then I watch them roll away again. Just sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. Sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time. Thanks. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Maybe I told you it was true.